Hello everyone and welcome back to more Fallout Wasteland Warfare episode 10 of season 4. There's three more episodes left after this. Time has just flown by and we're nearing the climactic conclusion to where the seasonal storyline has gone. I hope you're looking forward to seeing how it all ends. And in the effort of again keeping these a bit more brief since that's what people want, let's just jump straight into the settlement mode stuff since we are with New Hope this week again and do those explore cards. So as a reminder, New Hope earned their one chance at earning caps uh, last time they were here with the escort duty, so they're actually sitting on just over a thousand caps. So they're pretty flush with it, even though there's nowhere to spend it. So let's start with these two. We can reroll one if we don't like it. Enemy camp discovered. Next battle, your opponent must set up for you. That is not relevant here, so I'm just going to do another draw. That is purely for a battle mode type thing. Searchlight airport. The place is loaded with junk and rad scorpions. Draw three items, either run which means you keep one of the items, or evade the Rad Scorpion by testing Perception to keep all of them. We'll have to draw some items from the Wasteland deck, but yeah, we'll, we'll give that a go. Why not? And then the other one we drew, a helpful distraction. Pay 25 caps and the Trapper will help you in the next battle. During this round, when readying one model, you may ready one additional unused model. That's not really going to be relevant. We'll reroll this one. And draw this. Eldorado Gas. So you can grab or keep eating the abandoned food the longer you wait, the fewer of them there are, but the less food there is. Okay. So choose grab it now on a nook, gain three food items, or wait a few minutes to gain two, or wait 30 minutes and gain one. Then roll and gain items based on your in-game choice only. Uh, we don't really need food items, so I'll just go for the basic wait 30 minutes. Bottle cap is the most likely result in the blue die. Let's see if we get it real quick. Okay, so that has to be a food item. I have a food deck, so we'll draw one from that. And I'll quickly go get the wasteland deck so we can handle the searchlight airport. Alright, let's see what we found. This is the food deck, so this is just we keep one thing. Let's go for it. We found this. It's some iguana bites. Heal two, then get some radiation. We don't have the ability to cook while in battle, so the second part isn't relevant, but that'll be joining us in the next fight. And then, for the airport, it's draw three, and then I'm going to decide. So, let's go for that. Let's go for that. Let's go for that, and see what we have the potential to get, and then we'll see if it's worth the risk. Because if he goes into, because we do these with Nate, if he goes into the next battle poisoned, I have no way to cure it. So we found a plasma pistol, a Dinky the T-Rex souvenir worth 14 caps, or a laser rifle. We already have a laser rifle, but another one wouldn't hurt. Um, I think we'll just we'll just take the one and not risk testing perception. So sure, actually, now that I've decided that, let's just see what it would have been. But yeah, I'm just going to take the, the a second laser rifle for the camp. We would have passed on a crit, so sure, we would have had all three. I played it safe, so we have iguana bits and a laser rifle. Let's hear what we're doing today. Quest 10, quest name, The Gambit. Quest overview. The mechanist returned to New Hope. They begged for help to track down and stop the crazed cult leader Atom, as they did not want any more blood on their hands. The mechanist also asked to stay at the settlement along with his one remaining robot, the strange Securitron, and in return brought air filtration devices to be placed around New Hope. In the event of radioactive fallout reaching the settlement, they would stifle the lingering danger of prolonged radiation exposure, at least somewhat. They would need to be set up and would disturb the local wildlife, but if the worst were to happen, it would at least mean that the settlement wouldn't be wiped out. So there you have it, that's what we're doing today, and you'll already have seen the Mechanist and his Securitron are already on the map. We'll discuss the role they're playing once we're all set up and uh, what we're having to do today. But let's look quickly at who we're bringing, basically bringing the A-team here, like the best possible team we can amass to try and make sure we win today. So we have Nate and Nora, Nora obviously, we have John, we have Pennyworth, and we have the Settler who is basically equipped out like a sniper rifle, or with a sniper. And in terms of extra gear being brought, the gauze rifle is going to Nora again because she keeps doing really well with it, so she's absolutely taking that. And John is going to be wearing some T60 power armor and is bringing a super sledge because in that power armor he's he's already base strength six, so that boosts him way over the seven needed to get that extra black die. It makes him a bit of a monster in close combat, and that might be needed today. You will also have noticed there wasn't any enemies on the map yet. 
and that's because we have to discover them. So we're going to get deployed, we're going to deploy around the middle where the mechanist is and then I'll talk you through how we're actually winning today and how we're going to encounter enemies. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. So everyone is deployed basically in that kind of central square on the map and then there is three explore tokens on the map. You can just make them out top left of your screen, top right and bottom right. They are spread out in such a way that the group cannot move together and still have time to visit them all. So it's, uh, they're going to have to make some sacrifices, let's see. The goal is get to one of the things with those tokens, flip them over and it either says, I can't remember if I used A, B, C or 1, 2, 3, but either way it's, you know, sequential like that and that denotes what enemies are around there. Group 1 slash A is a Mirelurk and two Mirelurk hatchlings, Group B is two Feral Ghouls and a Mole Rat, and Group C slash 3 is a Deathclaw. So th those are all the enemies we will be encountering, but the goal is to get there, discover what enemies are there, and then to either do a Perception or an Endurance... Uh, perception or... What's the other one? Int. Intelligence. There we go. I blanked on intelligence, ironically. A perception or an intelligence test, whichever stat is higher, on the thing that has the search token. And this is to represent helping the mechanist set up these filters, making sure they're tamper-proof, hack-proof, etc. And they need to be done in case of worst-case scenario. If one of the enemies that spawn around the tokens is in combat with the person trying to do the check, their skill is minus two try and encourage actually killing the enemies rather than just trying to work around them. It's a major victory if all three are done, if at least two are done that's a minor victory. The mechanist is not really on the table for the purposes of this, he will not fight, he is too busy doing computer things. He is also using the strange Securitron of his to actually help achieve this. So the Securitron is rooted in place however he will be able to engage from where he is. He will be able to defend himself on the off chance he does get charged but he can shoot from where he is with his Gatling or his Securitron SMG. On that note one last thing to mention before we jump into round one I forgot to say specifically what Pennyworth is equipped with this time. It's the Mr Handy Buzzsaw, Laser and Flamer. Simple as that. So there's no enemies on the table to start with so we're going first with that, let's jump into round one of five and see if they can get these filtration devices working because if the worst happens, they need them. So John is feeling very safe and secure inside that power armor of his, so I'm going to go with him first. A double yell move from the center does get him to the left side investigation token, so that's the thing he needs to check, that kind of generator thing there. But what has he discovered guarding it? Ah, so I did use one, two, and three, and would you know it? It's the worst possible result. So number three is a death claw. <laughs> Excellent. That he must have just been really crouched down low there to hide behind that thing. So now the death claw is going to activate and start wrecking face. That's hmm. Had to find the worst thing first, huh? Oh, I've been calling it a death claw this whole time, but I forgot to give my people a chance. I actually did make it a young death claw, so it has slightly less health and one less armor, I think. I uh, did forget to mention that, but th this is the card I had looked at. I'm not retroactively applying it. I just forgot to call it a young death claw. So the young death claw has charged into John, is attacking him, taking a green charge die bonus, getting an extra black bonus because he's got seven or more strength. It's nine, I believe. He only hits on fours, so he, had, he does actually hit on a lower value than a box standard death claw, and that is a fail. Not a crit fail, but a fail. Can he do anything with quick actions? He does not have the ability to do so, so that is a swing and a miss, thankfully. Though, as a matter of note, just in case you haven't seen a death claw be used before, for every action they do where a enemy is within the line of sight, you start priming death claw crush. When it has three, it can do a close combat action called death claw crush, although he has a slightly weaker version of it. So I deliberately planned this out so that my two pretty decent close combat fighters, John in that power armor and Nate, were going to go first and we're going to discover places because I did think, oh hey, there's a one in three chance of it being a death claw. They can kind of hold their own against a death claw. So, well, that's sorted now. Let's see what Nate has discovered. I'm going to have to lean around the camera here. Nate has found group number one, so we know what is down in the one we haven't explored yet. But that does mean a Mirelurk and two Mirelurk hatchlings are appearing. One of those is going to activate and then alternate as normal with the rest. Out of those, it was one of the two Mirelurk hatchlings that was randomly selected, charged into Nate, distance yellow, 
and is swinging. Oh, forgot that they get a charge die bonus on the very first attack. I'm just rolling off camera. They're taking a black one. So, it's normally just a green die and they get to attack twice for every two health rounding up they have. So, this is two attacks with an extra black die on top for the first one. And that is a four that comes down to a two. So, it is a hit for just one damage. Neat. Fully blocks it. He actually should have had super armor. I forgot again, but that goes away now anyway. And then the second attack from the one hatchling. That is a five that comes down to a four. I think they needed a three. I'm going to have to check. Nope, they needed a four. That is a hit for one more damage. Nate can block that pretty easy. Is his base armor three? Yes, it is. He has fully blocked it. Nice job. So Nora is going to go next. Sharpshooter Nora, and I want her to try and remove an activation. As many activations as we can remove from the enemy as possible will make this easier. So I'm going to have her just stand still, fire that gauze rifle twice. Hopefully at different targets, but maybe at the same one. And she's going to shoot at the Marlark Hatchling Swarm that has not activated yet. And she's just getting the yellow die, and it's on sevens, and we'll just roll here. And that comes down to a seven, thankfully. Yep, so that is three base damage versus one armor. Actually, I don't think they have armor, because they're hatchlings. Yep, and they have three health, so she just eviscerated that one with a gauze rifle blast. Fantastic. Her other action, she can either risk trying to shoot the death claw. <laughs> or risk shooting the other swarm. I'm gonna risk shooting the other swarm, because that means she's hitting on 10 or nines. Well, she hit, now she has to decide whether or not she's accidentally shooting Nate in the back. One in three is the intended target. She is hitting the intended target, it has no armor. Good job, Nora is just outshining Nate, like at every opportunity, I mean, obviously it helps, she has a three base damage. Gauze rifle in her hands she wouldn't normally have, but. Her chance to hit is coming up more often than his chance to hit in close combat. All of a sudden, after that excellent shooting, it's just the Meyer Lurk, so he charged into Nate, taking a green charge die bonus on top of his green, yellow, black. One damage base with an extra one damage on any bottle caps, hitting on, I think it's fives. I'll double check if I need to. That is an eight that comes down to seven, six, five. It hits, it breaks one armor and does two extra damage. Oh, so that is three versus uh, reduced down to two armor. For Nate, he blocked two and took one. That's the best possible result in the situation he found himself. So, you want to see something dangerous? The Securetron that isn't allowed to move can engage with the Mirelurk because it's within range of his weapons. He's going to use the Gatling. So, it's in range black, which means he, which is a short range, so he's getting a black die on top of just the skill die. Normally hitting on fives, but he's shooting into combat, so it's on sevens. And the Gatling fires five times. Four times, sorry, and it's one energy damage, so I'm just going to do all the skill rolls first, and then we'll see how many actually hit the intended target. So, <laughs> four times on fives. Ah, but what about when it's extra damage, like now? Ah, we're going to have to do it one at a time. That's, that's, that's what makes Gatling weapons so hard to keep track of in this game. So we fired once, it's doing one extra damage. One in three is the Meyer Lurk. He is hitting the Meyer Lurk. It's energy. I looked at his physical defense one moment. Energy defense is three. So that is two damage versus three armor. And he blocks two. So nothing there. Second shot of four. Same roll again, just the base. One damage. Is it hitting Nate? Nope. It is hitting the Meyer Lurk. Would have had to roll a four to block it, uh, to not block it rather. Second last shot. Fail. I'm not sure if that was on camera, but it was a crit fail. And then fourth and final shot is another quick action with one extra damage. So that's two. Is he hitting Nate? He is hitting Nate. Arg. So that's two damage versus three energy armor. And he blocks all of it. Okay, well, that was fairly ineffective all around. Can he do anything with quick actions? No, he cannot. Good job. So I kind of want to deal with these problems before we trigger the third set of enemies now that we know what they are and where they are. So I'm going to go with the Settler and she's going to fire into the combat between John and the Deathclaw. And if I remember rightly, she does not have a good track record of helping John. So we're going to give it a go anyway. She's uh, hitting on what, eights now because she's shooting into combat. Yeah, that's a hit. I'm just going to roll her other skill roll now just to get it done. Yeah, both hit. She doesn't do anything extra with her hunting rifle. So it's just two hits through. First hit will be hitting the Deathclaw. The second hit will be hitting John. 
Ouch. Okay, so two damage versus the Death Claw's armor of, well, Young Death Claw, which is just three, so he fully blocked it. And in that power armor, John's currently sitting on three plus one, so he's fully blocking that. Yeah, would have had to roll four. Shouldn't have said that before rolling, but fairly ineffective. Now I need to decide what I'm going to do with Pennyworth. I'm going to have Pennyworth help out Nate. He's shooting into combat with that Mr. Handy laser, and because he's shooting into combat, he's hitting on nines. So it's a pretty high chance of hitting. That's a six. Does the bottle cap do anything on his laser? It does not. Please hit the fire lurk. Um, well, it tipped, but it is tipping towards a three. So, yes, he is hitting the Mire Lurk. I'll just roll the armor die here. And that is three. Is he doing energy? He is doing energy. So, unfortunately, that is. I think that's fully blocked. Well, a couple of enemies managed to get removed off the table there, but time is of the essence. Remember, they don't technically have to die if they want to take some risky skill checks to just get the job done. We'll play it by ear if that's going to be what it comes down to. Let's just flip this. Tumbleweeds, oh this is tedious to do because you have to place five different tumbleweeds and then they just provide cover. Uh, we're already locked in combat and I'm not going to trigger the final swarm on this turn. So we might as well just treat that as nothing. Fun nothing, but still nothing. So as round two starts, it was a 50-50 between the two enemies currently on the table. The Mylar got it, which is good because I want John to potentially have a chance to just really batter that death claw with the super sledge to see what he can do. It's bad for Nate. Uh, this is on fives twice, and that is a seven that comes down to a six, so it's actually a miss. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Let's see you repeat the feat with that Marlar claw. That is a six. So that is a miss. I'm, I'm doubting my, myself. I'm gonna have to check. It is a miss. He actually managed to whiff twice. That is fantastic news. All right, I am expecting big things from John here because the Super Sledge built in dice, two yellow, one blue die. It's got a high chance of shattering armor. If it gets a star, you break their armor, I think, or leg. We'll check if that happens. John's in that power armor, which boosts his strength above seven, so he's getting a black die for that. And his melee skill is actually tied to his strength, and his strength with that power armor is currently boosted to nine, I believe. Six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. So he's hitting on nines. So depending on how good the first swing is, we might just do two. I was also considering doing a cheeky just trying to remove that objective because his base int is like eight. So even if it's got a minus two with the death claw being there, that's still a pretty high chance. But hey, let's see what the super sledge can do. Well, he's getting a quick action. So what did you need to break the arm? You, oh, you needed a star. That could be really good. So we'll hold that there for a second. Breaking one armor, doing one extra damage. Base damage on a super sledge is three. It's basically the gauze rifle of melee attacks. So that's four damage versus reduced by one, two armor. Four armor, uh, so four damage versus two armor. He didn't block any of it and took all four. That is amazing news. Young Death Claws only have, what, eight health? Yeah. Now, is that a break the arm? That is definitely a break the arm. So that means his chances to hit anyone are massively reduced. Now, should I try and just go for the objective? I think I want to swing that super sledge again. That's pretty impressive. Keep in mind, if he wasn't wearing the power armor, it wouldn't be as impressive. You wouldn't have the black die, and his chance to hit would be a lot lower. But, such as it is, this seems like a pretty decent setup. Let's try it again. Watch me crit fail now that I've said all that. Close. <laughs> that is a hit. It shatters two of his armor, and it is four damage. Again, that is incredible. So, four damage versus one armor. He doesn't block any of it and takes another four. Did he just die? He actually just died. I do not believe it. John just swung that super sledge like into his skull and sent him reeling to the floor and then just did an overhead slam and crushed what was left of his brain. Good grief. Maybe I should have made it a normal death claw. I wasn't expecting that. John is the dumb man. Okay, well, he, he did it. <laughs> You know what that's taught me? Nate should be wearing power armor more often. We need to find a way to get him like X01 or something. Anyway, I'm going to go with Nate. Uh, it's all just my turn now because of the Death Claw dying. So he's going to swing Grognak's sword twice. He's got an extra black die because his strength is 7 plus. Speaking of that Death Claw dying, I know I said I'm trying to keep these more succinct and ramble less, but the closest like mental image I could conjure for what John just did to that Death Claw in the Resident Evil 3 remake when you're fighting the boss fight against kind of like dog form nemesis when he's about to jump at Jill Carlos swings a huge crane into his face and it kind of goes all slow motion as you see his jaw dislodge and he gets sent flying I'm, I'm imagining that's what John just did with that super sledge pretty cool anyway 
That is a six, so he's already hitting regardless, and he is rolling big this time. There we go. Everyone's coming out to play this week. Does the bottle do anything with Grognak's sword? Uh, I've got too many cards over here. It does. It stuns him. That's handy, I guess. Speaking of handy, that is five damage. It's against his full armor, though, so not super great. But five damage. He, d he doesn't have four. He has three, right? No, he has two plus one, so he did whiff it, but he blocks one and still takes four. So, okay. Not so invincible now, are you, Mirelurk? And uh, he's, I was considering just trying to interact with the objective, but hey, let's, let's go for the jugular. Let's swing again and see what happens. We've got Pennyworth coming in to support him this turn anyway. That is a three. It was probably off camera, but it was a three. Not as great a roll. He's only breaking one armor, so he's down to, what, one plus one. And he fully blocked that swing. It's stunned, though, so that will help if he's still alive at the end of the round. All right, let's see if we can keep this trend going. Pennyworth is charging his green charge distance, and he's going to help out Nate. Taking a black charge die bonus. Green, because they're outnumbering. Let's see what he can do. Hitting on sevens, and he rolled a seven, breaking one armor and doing one extra damage, excuse the text message. So that's them down to one plus one. And they did manage to fully block two damage, but one still got through. Annoyingly, that leaves the Mirelurk on one health. So we've got two quick movements we can do here. I'm moving Nora into position where you can see her. That means she's primed the gauze rifle twice, and I'm gonna move the settler, and it's dangerous because she's not exactly built for close range especially with only four health, but she's getting just close enough that she can trigger the horde that we know is two feral ghouls and a mole rat in the next round, and then Nora can just start blasting. That's the plan, anyway. I haven't decided what I'm doing with the Securitron. I'm going to need a minute to think about that, because the chances of only hitting the Mirelurk are pretty low. Yeah, New Hope's been doing really well, so I'm going to take the chance with the Securitron. He'll be hitting the Mirelurk on one and four, because you have to start and then go round and come back. And he's hitting on sevens because he's hitting into combat. First hit is a crit fail. Good job, buddy. You're letting us in. Did I say I'm using his SMG this time? Just so we roll less dice. Second shot with the SMG. Well, that's a hit. No extra damage. So it's just two flat damage. On one and four, he is hitting the Mirelurk. He is hitting the Mirelurk. So that is two damage versus two plus one armor. And he only blocks the super armor. So he takes one damage and dies. This is rare for New Hope to be doing so very, very well. That is amazing. Well, this is going better than expected, but keep in mind they do still need to interact with the things to get them done. Wet ground. Before attempting a close combat skill roll, you have to test your agility, and if you fail, the agility roll is minus two. Hopefully that will only matter for the enemy once they're triggered as we go into round three. So as we start round three, there's no enemies on the board and we know what's going to be triggered. So I'm going to do some necessary activations first so that then they can start moving towards help, hopefully. So we're going to start with John. He has an int of eight or nine. It is an int of eight. Yes. Hopefully doing it in one roll and successfully doing what the mechanism needs done. That is a crit. So absolutely it is done. He no longer needs to be over here, so he'll be somewhere roughly here after a yellow move. In fact, let's just do it real quick. Yellow move towards where the threat is going to be with that super sledge. And he's still got his kneecapper as well, but the super sledge has certainly done the work. And then, other end of the board, Nate. Also has a pretty high end, but it's slightly lower. I believe it's seven. Let's see what he gets. It will because the crit fail. It's one extreme to the other. So he's going to have to use his other action. And he got a crit. He actually went. So that was crit, crit fail, crit. Okay, so he is done as well. That means we've got at least a minor victory no matter what happens now, so that's good. Uh, Nate had to use both actions though, so he's still stuck up there. So the Zettler has moved into contact. We already know what this is. This is number two, which is Ghoul, Ghoul, Mole Rat. Now, she actually has another action left because one was enough to get there. So I'm going to have her quickly take a pot shot at that Mole Rat and just try and immediately kill it before it even gets a chance to do anything. So short range with that hunting rifle of hers. And that is a crit again with double armor break. It's only got two health, so she just takes the head off it. She was quick on the draw there. Who is this new hope and what have you done with the real new hope? One of the ghouls is gonna activate now and get into combat with her, but still, that really helps. So precisely that is happening. Taking a black charge die bonus selected randomly on sixes. That's a six on the dot, although it came down by three. 
So that's three damage versus her. <laughs> she hasn't got one armor. Oh, hmm. She's only got one armor and she didn't block any of it. So that is three damage. She has one health left. I'm going to activate the Securitron and take pot shots with the <laughs> Gatling at the one ghoul who hasn't activated. So it's four shots, just a black die. Actually, is he still in black range? Because if not, then... Oh, he's not. Is that worth it? No, it'd be better off just firing the SMG. So just a green die, long range for the SMG, which is green plus red. Fair enough. Two shots. And that is an eight, which is not good enough. That's a swing and a miss. Second shot. That's a hit. No extra damage, though. Two physical versus... I think they only have one armor. And he certainly didn't block it there. So two damage. Not bad. And that other ghoul then charged into the settler. Um... Green charge die bonus, green for outnumbered as well. Well, welcome to the death of the settler. Yeah. Yep, breaks one heart. Yep. Unfortunately, she is out of there. She did some good work though and got them triggered. And now we can just shoot at them with. Oh, with a very powerful gauze rifle shot. So, sharpshooter Nora over there is getting two black dice because she primed the gauze rifle twice in the previous turn. And she's going to shoot at the one with full health first as a result of that, since there's the chance of extra damage. And it's on sevens, that's seven, and that is five damage with one armor break. And that just means he gets no armor save, so she just obliterated that ghoul. For the next shot though, she's losing those and just taking the yellow die against the one that has two wounds. And she hits it, she shatters all the armor on it, does three damage base and just took its head off as well. Who is this team? That is every enemy removed from the table. We just need to get down there and pass the skill check to win. The last activation for round three was Pennyworth who just motored down towards that last objective, two red moves. It means you'll still have to use up one move to get next to it uh, in round four, but that could just be good enough to win right there. We're still going to do the event card and stuff since that can add threats that might hinder things, so let's go see what that is. Something good or neutral please, let's go back there, back there, say we're doing this. Cleansing Rain, add two random items to the... Oop. I almost dropped the card, but we're trying to keep it in focus. Two items of the battlefield, player with advantage marker chooses two opposite corners. From each corner, place one green from each edge. Uh, with the direction we're going, actually it's, if it's from random edge, if it's from the edge we're heading towards, that is possible that we'll just pick them up. So let me just, I'll roll the armor die since this is a solo play. There's no opponent in settlement mode, so if we go from top right, it would be one, two, and then bottom left is three, top left is four. So if either of these rolls is two, there's going to be an item green in from the corner we're actually focusing on. Nope. Oh, okay. So there's going to be a random item green in. Uh, someone will pick it up as long as we do the final objective. So as we start round four of five, Pennyworth is just moving so he's touching the item that has blown in and the final objective. His int and uh, perception are both five, so either or. <laughs> he rolled a ten. So unfortunately he's whiffed, which means he isn't going to be able to go get that aim. Well, he already moved to get down there, so he couldn't anyway. It does mean he could do it in the theoretical fifth turn. I need to see if Nora can reach. I don't think she can in one turn. This is just going to be a bunch of moving towards that objective. So I'm going to just do it in a one -er, and we'll be back in a second. And that might be the quickest turn in history. That is where everybody ended up. Nora got into base to base, so she has two chances to complete the objective in the final turn, which would mean Pennyworth can loot the item that appeared. Uh, but yeah, we'll just go to the event for turn four. Well, for an ironically uneventful turn, let's see what event is carrying us over <laughs> into the next turn. Recruitment Beacon, The Willing. This is Jessica. If you need somewhere warm and dry and are willing to work for your keep, come to the source of this beacon, Saints Park. Welcomes The Willing. This is Jessica if you need, etc. AKA Blurry Nothing. Well, it all comes down to this, really, doesn't it? I'm going to go with Nora, no matter what stat you pick, it's on sevens. By the way, I forgot the goal that attacked or both goals that attacked the settler should have been affected by that cleansing rain or wet rain whatever it was i uh, totally forgot but not gonna matter so let's see if nora can do it that's a crit fail so she certainly can't do it on that second roll okay she did it that is the objective done that means pennyworth can successfully loot this i wasn't sure if i was supposed to actually like randomize a token to maybe make it be an item but i'm counting it as an item here is the wasteland deck it will be expanded upon in future, but for now we're just having it as is, and we're going to say I found this. <laughs> Are you kidding me? We just got one of these from an explorer. Okay, well we have another laser rifle to throw on the pile, I guess, and that is a major victory. 
So that is that, a major victory for New Hope. I don't know who these people are, but could they stick around for longer? What have we learned today? Well, we've learned that, well, John in Power Armor is really scary. Yes, the Super Slide was obviously doing a lot of the work, base damage 3, but yeah, I didn't give enough credit to his base close combat skill being surprisingly decent. Uh, Nate needs some power armor as well to help boost up that strength even further, I think, and chance to hit. So yeah, in the worst case scenario, if the worst happens, New Hope and the very small area around it now have sort of a defense against the worst of any nuclear fallout. Wouldn't stop it completely, but would certainly alleviate the issues. Obviously, the best thing to happen would be for that not to occur, but they were planning ahead, and now the Mechanist and his Securitron have joined the New Hope settlement. They're not going to be available on missions unless they're spe uh, specific to something he is apt at, or they are apt at, um, but they're there, and should no Ho New Hope be attacked, they would obviously help defend it, and they're going to focus on maintaining the filters and working out any other defense against potential nuclear fallout. Since they're feeling a little bit guilty, and they're also potentially trying to track down Atom and what he could be doing, and where, and how. All that that will be answered in the three final episodes of the season. Thank you very much for watching. I sincerely hope you enjoyed. Feel free to discuss in the comments. Uh, if you want to support the series, leaving a like, subscribing, that all helps. If you can, go above and beyond to help monetarily. Becoming a channel member gets you access to each new episode a day early and some other season uh, series a week early. You can also consider checking out the channel sponsor. If you buy anything via the affiliate link, I get compensated as well. Either way, hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Ta-ta for now.